Hello and welcome to another episode of Coffee With. I am your host, Saina Bujang, and with me in the studio is no one other than by Mustafa Asala. Um, he is the founder of the Youth Against Irregular Migration, commonly known as YAIM. So we'll do nothing but go into the interview and find out more about Bai Mustafa and his journey and um, what it's been like since he's been back from his irregular migration journey. Thank you. So welcome to Coffee With Bai. Um, do tell us, who was Bai Mustafa Sala mm -hmm. before he became the founder of the Youth Against Irregular Migration? Uh, thank you very much, Senabu, for having me today in your this platform, Coffee With. Uh, as you rightly introduced me, I am by Mustafa Sala from Latirkunda Sabiji. Uh, that's where I, I, I was grown up, uh, like any other youth in this uh, country. I've went to school, you know, uh, and I've graduated in 2011 mm -hmm. due to some you know some 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 obstacles because i was supposed to graduate uh, in 2007 at saint augustine but uh, life wasn't uh, easy with me and i was having other dreams uh, other than going to normal school uh, at that time i was not interested in what i was learning all i wanted was to you know build my future so I choose inter uh, IT information technology, mm -hmm. so I left grade 11 in mm -hmm. 2006 and went to GTMI mm -hmm. to pursue my computer studies. Mm -hmm. uh, from 2007 to 2008, I have my degrees, mm -hmm. uh, my diplomas uh, in IT, mm -hmm. and uh, but to have a job was very difficult that time, mm -hmm. so. People keep advising me, sisters, you know, friends, to go back to school. If I don't have the grade 12 certificate, I may not have a good job. Even mm -hmm. if I have skills, that's what they made me to believe. Mm -hmm. So I went back in 2009 to grade 10 when my uh, all my classmates, all my batchmates are in, uh, have almost finished their university studies or some are working, mm -hmm. you know. So from 2009 to 2011, Thank God, I went back and have my OAS certificate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but from there also life was very difficult. Life was challenging, you know. Here, if you graduate grade 12, they made you believe that you finished education. Mm -hmm. Now the world is in your hands. When the education system didn't, you know, create us to, to didn't make us to create jobs, but mm -hmm. instead to go and look for job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so their life was very hard. So as any other youth, I was into music, I was into DJing, I was into farming, you know, mm -hmm. anything where I can have something, mm -hmm. that's where I would put my energy mm -hmm. in terms of creating movements, you know, creating football teams, you know, mm -hmm. like any other youth here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in 2016, I had scholarship to go to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And that was the main reason why I left the Gambia. And that was the reason why I ended up also in Libya mm -hmm. in 2016. Because mm -hmm. when I had the scholarship, the embassy was in Nigeria. So I had to fly to Nigeria to go and look for the visa. Mm -hmm. But upon arriving in Nigeria, after three months, we were denied a visa mm -hmm. Taiwan from Taiwan because of the former uh, conflict between the two countries, mm -hmm. Yajame and the Taiwanese government, mm -hmm. the tie that got broke. So we are victim of that also. Mm -hmm. And I was there with a lot of Gambian students, you know. Mm -hmm. So from there, I decided to take, to, to take this irregular migration. Right. Yeah. But it was never part of my plans, you know, to risk my life just to go to Europe. But I was in a situation whereby, you know, things were so much difficult for me, mm. you know, because I came from a poor family, you know. Mm. Thank God we are very content, you know, we never do what we cannot do or never mm -hmm. try to get what we don't have, mm -hmm. you know, but we are poor. Mm. You know, so coming back to Gambia after losing everything will not be easy, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why I decided to go to the back way, you okay. know. But 
it was never part of my belief, you know, okay. to risk my life. Yeah. Because my friends have made it, mm -hmm. you know, in 2014. They, they started going since after the war in 2011, yeah. 12, you know, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Even my younger ones were going, but people used to tell me, uh, by, because they called me Alabai, mm -hmm. so Alabai, you are afraid, you know, you mm -hmm. used to go to Senegal, you used to go to Guinea-Bissau, but you, you know, you never tried to go to Bakwe. Why? Because you are afraid. Mm -hmm. I told them, no, you know, uh, it didn't take my mind, you know, mm -hmm. because I believe that, you know, with the right support here, we can make it, Indeed. trust me. Mm -hmm. And anybody who knows me also knows that some of, some of them even call me Mr. Ga Mr. Gambia. <laughs> because when it comes to music, I am biased, you know. I am, you know, when it comes to sports, when it comes to so many things, mm -hmm. I put Gambia in first. I mm -hmm. put Gambia in front, mm -hmm. you know, because... That's where I know, that's where I am. Of course, of course. Yeah. So okay. that's by Mustafa Asala, and that's how I end up in Libya. Right. So we'll <laughs> talk about your trip to Libya. Thank um, you. But before we get there, what was it like growing up as a young by Mustafa Asala? You've told us that, you know, life wasn't easy, mm -hmm. it was difficult. Mm -hmm. um, your background also was not the strongest, mm -hmm. but still you managed to pull through. Mm -hmm. But as a child, did mm -hmm. that affect you or did you, um, did you act outside of that and just, you know, not let what your troubles are, mm -hmm. you know, disturb you? Yeah. Like I said, as a child here, you know, the, because uh, my father is a religious leader, mm -hmm. you know, and he put us through, you know, he makes sure that he provides, you know, what we need to survive, which is to know who we are, to know, you know, where we belong and mm -hmm. to know uh, our religion, mm -hmm. which is first, mm -hmm. you know. so. The education side also, it's like any other poor person going to school mm -hmm. because there are so many things which you will need and you will not be able to have it. Mm -hmm. uh, your parents, if though they want you to be educated in the English side, mm -hmm. but they don't know, they have no idea of what you need, you know, because they don't went through that process. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it can be very challenging in mm -hmm. terms of getting materials. Mm -hmm to, you know, make learning easier for us, mm -hmm. you know, at, at the same time also you have to go to Dara mm -hmm. and you have to go to school, you know. Yeah. So it goes up to a time where I decide, you know, to focus more on the education uh, English sec side. Mm -hmm. When I passed, when I started my grade nine, okay. I said now I will leave Dara because this is very difficult, you know. <laughs> Not knowing that it is the, you it's know, the <laughs> it's the best place, you know, <laughs> of course. where I can have all the knowledge I want, Unique, you know, yeah. also, you know, but because of the pressure in the data and the time it took, mm -hmm. you know, make us make it, uh, to, uh, may, may make it very difficult for us to focus. On Indian. Yeah. So I went to English. Uh, I focused on the English, but. Like I said, traveling from, I was living in Latakunda, going to Banjul, you know, it was very challenging mm -hmm. to get vehicles, you know, and it went up to a time, grade 11, why I even decided is because uh, our, 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 our former principal, Martin, mm -hmm. I know he will be very surprised, but you know, Mr. Martin from St. Teresa's, he came to uh, St. Augustine, mm -hmm. and he wanted to treat like uh, the students like junior students. Mm -hmm. When sense is a uh, grown up school, you know, uh, grown up men are already in that school, mm -hmm. you know. So he introduced certain things which didn't even favor the poor because mm -hmm. you have to stay for studies by and forth and you have to pay mm -hmm. even if you don't attend, mm -hmm. you know. So he, he waited until that time before we start our exams. He started to, you know, remove those who don't pay, those who have areas when mm -hmm. exam supposed to start that day. Mm. So, and after the money was also too much, I said, my, I said to my parents, wait, uh, you, can, you can save that money, mm -hmm. I'll stop going to school. Oh. You know, <laughs> so it's all because of the pressure and you know, mm -hmm. how they you know, make us believe that education is the key to our life, and it is. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but they don't make it free for everybody they, yeah. they don't make it easy for us they don't make it accessible for us mm -hmm. and yet they want to make us believe that it is the key yeah when it is the key let them make it free <laughs> that so that actually rhymes. Uh, yeah mm -hmm. so life it wasn't easy it wasn't easy as any other poor youth in this gambia but alhamdulillah me. now right alhamdulillah because i believe in myself and i never you know get discouraged or okay. get fed up in life because every mm -hmm. situation that happened into my life it happened for a reason exactly you know okay. so i try to you know grow from that difficulties that mm -hmm. situation and, and learn from, your mistakes. And learn from yeah. my mistakes and you know okay yeah all right all right um we, we could we could continue this conversation <laughs> and go on but you know there's so much we need to still know about you thank you so um you explained that your journey your irregular migration journey mm -hmm. it wasn't the aim or it wasn't the idea you wanted for your life no. like most people usually yearn for that from mm -hmm. a young age mm -hmm. back, yeah, mm -hmm. i need to go i need to mm -hmm. go but for you, it was a situation and mm -hmm. a circumstance that led you to that. Yeah. So tell us about that and um, the experience and your journey. Because mm -hmm. we understand that the mm -hmm. journey, you know, through Backway mm -hmm. isn't easy. Mm -hmm. You know, you come across so many challenges and obstacles Absolutely. and you see so many things. Absolutely. But still people want to go. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Like you, when you was ready for it, I'm mm -hmm. sure you were like, I'm just going to go for mm -hmm. it. And no matter what anyone says, mm -hmm. the madam. So what happened? Exactly <laughs> as <laughs> you said it, because I, my mother would not want me also to go, mm -hmm. you know. So when I make up my mind, I knew all the challenges that I might face, yeah. you know. But uh, I was... You know, it's something that you hardly believe, you know, because mm -hmm. you always had it from some from 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 the news or mm -hmm. from those who never experienced. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones who will try to, you know, discourage you. So but I knew that traveling from Nigeria to Libya will be very difficult, mm -hmm. you know, but I was ready for it also mm -hmm. because I am a man, you know. And I believe I was strong, you know, mm -hmm. both mentally and physically mm -hmm. to embark on that journey and to face any kind of difficulties. You know, even that, you know, I was not afraid of it mm -hmm. uh, at some point. Mm -hmm. You know, from Abuja, I started my journey in Abuja all mm -hmm. alone, went through Niger, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and they got, they smuggled me to the border. Mm -hmm to pass the, to, 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 to de deviate the security, mm -hmm. you know, checkpoints. Mm -hmm. But I had to pay them money also, mm -hmm. and they had to take me through a very dangerous and risky journey, mm. risky roads, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, it took me four hours to just cross the border. Wow. Four hours. Mm -hmm. When I was already seeing the border, you, you but they had to there. dive, <laughs> deviate the road, Mm -hmm. And it took me four hours to cross that journey, wow. that, that, that border. So from Niz I enter Niger, you know, language barrier is number one, your problem, mm -hmm. you know, what you can eat also will be your problem because mm -hmm. anything that you see will be new to you, mm -hmm. you know. And some people are there, they are very mean and they are very bad, they are very wicked. Since they know that this is a transit center, migrants normally take this journey. So they can sell anything, they can set up any challenges for the migrants, mm -hmm. you know. But I got uh, advice from one Niger citizen there. Mm -hmm. He told me that you have to disguise yourself from these migrants. Don't look like them, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was having my half tan. Mm -hmm. So I used that half tan to look like the people of Niger, you know. Okay. So, and he <laughs> gave me two names. He said, your <laughs> name is Mustafa. So you, think you can say Mustafa Muhammadu, okay. anywhere you go. So, and I joined their normal transportation, okay. not the ones that the migrants used to take. Mm -hmm. So from there to Agadez, Alhamdulillah, I didn't face any challenges there, you know, but unless a very long journey, mm -hmm. because it take you more than one day mm -hmm. to reach to Agadez. And mm. Agadez, you have to connect to an agent. Okay. And it's a place where all the West African countries used to meet. Mm. It's a place, you know, very dangerous, very mm -hmm. risky. And the people there are poor, just like us. Mm -hmm. Some of them will, try, will even beg the migrants to have 
to food, you know, to wow. eat the people of Agadez. Yeah. And it is very, very, very hot. There is no tree, you know. Even if you're sick there, you know. You may die. You may die. Many people used to lose their lives there. And there is a lot of also kidnapping going on mm -hmm. there. You know, okay. even human trafficking, especially wow. the side of the women. Yeah. It starts there. Wow. And so, yeah, I don't mean to cut you, but, um, you know, the description can go, you can talk about everything, but yeah. we don't have much time. Yeah. So just um, tell us, you know, one of the most thing, like maybe one or two things that you have picked up from your journey mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. that has changed your life, mm -hmm. that you've seen, mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I don't want to see this ever again. Mm -hmm. So I would not tell my brother to go on this journey or my sister mm -hmm. to go on this journey because of what I have seen. So just tell us something like that that we can learn from. Yeah, uh, first I will say in Tripoli, mm -hmm. uh, I was on the 14th January, and I can say that is the main reason mm. why I decided to end this irregular migration. You know, even by myself, I will do anything to make sure that it stops. Mm -hmm. Because they found us in our rooms, you know, early morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and they forced us out. If mm -hmm. you try to run, if you try to escape, they will shoot you to mm -hmm. death. If you try to hide yourself inside the room, they will burn you with the room. Mm -hmm. Everything there. So that day, it was like what we normally see in this news, you know, these explosions, these attacks. Mm -hmm. You know, we were right in the middle of that situation, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a very, 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 very serious day. You know, mm -hmm. and it was a whole day fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they were they, they, that's where they took us to the prison. Mm -hmm. You know, and when they took us to the big prison, my tiger, you know, they undress everybody, even you know, old young men, women, you know, they undress everybody, search every part of your body, mm -hmm. every part of your clothes, they take everything that they will want to take. Mm -hmm. You know, so. That's how they took us to the prison mm -hmm. and left us there for four months, you know, before we came back. Okay. And secondly, also, there is one Gambian in Libya. I heard that he is no more, he is dead, oh. you know, but if yeah, he is dead, sense. Alhamdulillah, God has done the best for us because ah. he is someone who have, you know, not only Gambians, but I can say the whole of the African migrants, you know. Mm. He put pressure on them, he tortured them, he sell them, he kill, you know. Hmm? He does every bad thing. Anything that you can that you can hurt from this journey has done it to migrants, you know, even Gambians. Why are you sure? I am hundred percent sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he is he is he is someone who is now known to the Gambian people mm. almost, you know. He's from Carnifin South. Wow. He was a very kind Gambian as they said. But mm -hmm. the, this journey had changed him to be a monster. Oh, wow. Not only Gambians, I can tell you. His only safest place is in Libya. Mm -hmm. He cannot go anywhere, not Europe, not, but not any other country, because he made people suffer. Mm -hmm. He made families cry, and he made, you know, all sorts of horrible things. Mm -hmm. Sankum and his crew done it. Wow. Sorry about that. Yeah. And <sighs> so those are the kind of reasons why we said why i said this must end you know mm -hmm. because my people don't know the realities that they're facing there mm -hmm. they just thought that is a normal journey mm -hmm. you will just have to take your boat your vehicle you know and your family can even accompany you when you are going to take boat your vehicle mm -hmm. and they themselves don't know what you might face there what mm -hmm. you will face Indeed. because this journey there are three certain things you know you either die or you either make it or you come back mm -hmm. right now in Libya. Mm -hmm. And that's what is happening all over, you know, anywhere there, anywhere there is irregular migration, you know, people will suffer, people will, you know, face all sorts of challenges. So our advocacy is not only this journey, but all sort of irregular migrations, you know. Mm -hmm. Even right now in this present COVID-19 in the Gambia, people are using this porous border to smuggle, you know, people in and out of this country, and mm -hmm. they are paying a lot of money mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So right now here, they are migrating irregularly, mm -hmm. and that's why the number is 
keep it's, it's, it's rising. Going high. It's, it's going high. It's going true. up. It's true. You know? so and I know it's an expensive journey as it, well. It is always an expensive journey. Mm -hmm. Risky and deadly. Mm -hmm. you know? And in the prison also is a room, you know, bigger than this one. Mm -hmm. They will fill it will mig uh, with, with migrants. And there will be no toilet inside that place, mm -hmm. you know. And that's where you will do everything. Wow. And imagine a room bigger than this, filled with people. Even some of them will not even have place to sit, talk less of sleep. Wow. So they will have to stand. And they will give you mattress. They will give you your blanket, you know, mm -hmm. your toothpaste, toothbrush, you know. But there will be no water for you to use any of those. There will be no place for you to put your Stop. blanket or your, your, your sponge mm -hmm. to lie down. And mm -hmm. uh, because it is something which is sponsored by the, you know, Europeans, EU, or the United Nations, for them to take care of the migrants. Mm -hmm. So they will have to show them what they are doing. Mm -hmm. But inside, it is the opposite. Of course. And people have to know that. And uh, so that's why we are doing everything we can to stop this. And that's where Yam comes in. And you that's where Yam was found yes. even inside that hard prison, you know. So and tell I us about that as well. Yeah, it, the idea came from Karamo Keta, who is the president. Mm -hmm. Initially, he got the idea of how to bring people together when we come back in mm -hmm. order to support ourselves. Mm -hmm. But when he told me the idea, I told him, yeah, this is something which can go even beyond that, not only support ourselves, but support the whole Gambia and the whole Africa because mm -hmm. all those, you know, African nationalities in that prison were admiring what we were up to, even though they don't know what Gambians were planning. Mm -hmm. Because I was the one mobilizing the Gambians, going, you know, to them, telling them this idea mm -hmm. that when we go back, let us form ourselves into a group mm -hmm. and play our part because almost everybody got discouraged, got disappointed why they embark on this journey. Mm -hmm. There is no one who was, you know, who didn't want to come back to Gambia. Mm -hmm. Everybody was willing to come because mm -hmm. of what they saw, because of the situation mm -hmm. that was happening in Libya, mm -hmm. you know. So there, it was not easy because the Arab will beat us sometimes if mm -hmm. they see us gathering because they will think that we are planning to escape mm -hmm. when we are on meetings, you know. Mm -hmm. So they will beat us we disperse and find our way out. Mm -hmm. So on the 4th of January, uh, uh, April was the day we came back, mm -hmm. you know, through the support of IOM, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because they came there and offered us this opportunity, mm -hmm. which is to come back to Gambia. Mm -hmm. When there, when there was no option, no other option other than that, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, we came back and we had the second batch in 2017, mm -hmm. coming up with this idea of starting this organization, mm -hmm. and a name was not even given to it that time, mm -hmm. you know, but our expectations also were very high from the government or IOM, you know, or the Gambia in general, and none of that was, you know, was there of an mm -hmm. arrival. Mm -hmm. And that has caused a lot of challenges even for the group because most, mig uh, most of the migrants said, uh, it is, it is not the best, you know, idea. Mm -hmm. Like the, uh, to to come back because of what they found, yeah. it was not the best idea because mm -hmm. there were no one from the government to come and attend us. There was no health assistance given to us. There was no transportation given to us at mm -hmm. the airport. So it was only the journalists and the immigration officers, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's where I first met. Uh, CC Sawane may as well rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can remember that day she even gave us courage, give us hope, you know, as a journalist, mm -hmm. as a Gambian sister, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but no one from the government was there. Okay. But okay. that didn't even discourage us mm -hmm. with all that, those challenges because we know that many people are coming back, mm -hmm. many migrants will come because yeah. right now the number has gone more than 5,000. Mm -hmm. migrants and imagine we were the second batch yeah but our efforts have made that change you know right now because the way they receive in return is have changed 
They are putting so many things in place, you know, even giving them phone calls and providing them temporal uh, accommodation, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But we were not fortunate to, to face, to, yeah, yeah, to benefit from that. But okay. thank God, it has changed. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Okay. So we're nearly there. Um, and this is the question about when you came back, you was dedicated. You didn't give up. And mm -hmm. I remember I met you and Karamo like early. Yeah, in 2017. Came, 17, yeah. yeah. So, and it was to talk about irregular migration. Mm -hmm. And I think I was working on a story to yeah. do that. So basically, now you've been dedicated, you've been engaged, mm -hmm. and you've worked with so many organizations. Mm -hmm. Yep. IOM, mm -hmm. ITC, mm -hmm. and then you've had the opportunity to travel to Uganda mm -hmm. um, on a summit. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that summit quickly, and also, um, what do you bring back from that, mm -hmm. and what do you plan to put into Gambia? Yeah, alhamdulillah, I will thank God, because uh, that opportunity, uh, because uh, I found that, that link, you know, on the internet, Mm -hmm. uh, and it is like, uh, what was the theme? The year of the returnees and internally displaced persons. Mm -hmm. uh, African Youth Summit, uh, Continental African Youth Summit, something like that in mm -hmm. Uganda. So I checked the link and I applied, you know, like any other <laughs> one who applied. But mm -hmm. I put the work of our group and they they saw it and they were very impressed mm -hmm. that we could able to pull that we can able to do that mm -hmm. so they said yeah why not we bring this guy mm -hmm. from the gambia mm -hmm. and i went there with fat john the president of uh network of girls against human trafficking mm -hmm. and i was given the opportunity to be a panelist to talk about uh, migration in this uh west africa mm -hmm. you know because i represent the west africa there mm -hmm. not only gambia yeah yeah but west africa Indeed. so i explained the challenges the reasons why most of the youths are living in this country and the solutions you know what we are to what we are doing mm -hmm. and what we want mm -hmm. so the <coughs> because we are against an irregular migration we should promote regu uh, regular migration Mm -hmm. We should make sure that Africans can travel within Africa mm -hmm. at the first place. But as a Gambian, to travel within Africa is more challenging than to travel outside Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, travel by land. Yeah. Likewise, any other African nationality, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So we are all facing that challenge. common challenge, yeah. which is not, which should not happen. Of course. You know, and I've, I've, I've read that. And mm -hmm. the AU was chair, uh, the AU was, uh, were, were, were the organizers of that forum, mm -hmm. uh, of that forum. So they underlined that statement. And I was very happy that the chair underlined it and to said that AU is working towards that to make sure okay. that we all can travel within Africa freely. Because okay. that's where the most challenges start of course. before reaching Europe. Mm -hmm. And in Africa, we can make it here. We have Gambians in other African countries who mm -hmm. are making it big here. Mm -hmm. We have other African countries in Gambia who are making, changing their lives. Yeah. So meaning that within Africa, we can even make it without risking our of lives course. just to go to Europe, yeah. you know, develop there and come back here with the change. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how much money you make outside the Gambia, you make more than that amount for them, for that country. Mm -hmm. with all the tax the expenses that you are making indeed if you come with two million ten million hundred million you have worked more than hundred million for them mm -hmm. so if at all that was done here in gambia you everybody will benefit of course you know so i emphasize on that and also not uh, only that uh, skills also mm -hmm. you know i talk about skills there in the gambia here most of the youths don't have skills. Even if you have skills, you're not supported, you're not respected. Yeah. And it happens to other countries also, not only Gambia. Mm -hmm. You know? So, and what I've learned there, like in Gambia, our migration, irregular migration, is centered on underemployment, you know, mm -hmm. uh, unemployment, stigma and the discrimination that is happening within the society. Yeah. But in other countries, they have internally displaced persons. In Gambia, we don't have that. We have internal urban and rural migration, mm -hmm. but there, they are either migrated because of war, which you must forcefully migrate it, yeah. because of drought, you know, because of, you know, 
other natural disasters. Mm -hmm. So that's the reasons why all those uh, people are migrating, like in Uganda, in mm -hmm. South Sudan, you know, in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But okay. in Gambia, it is the opposite. Yeah. So that's why we have a better chance to correct the wrongs, you know, to, 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 to change the narratives, you know, mm -hmm. before we end up like those countries, because those countries were successful countries before. Mm -hmm. Countries like Somalia, now yeah. they are with no president. All is because of, you know, the civil problems. Yeah. And here in the Gambia, we are seeing that, you know, we should not let that happen. Yeah, we should right. learn from other countries. That's true. And stop this irregular migration and this human trafficking, you know. Mm -hmm. But those who are there for us, those who should support us to end this, are making it a way for them to, you know, get more support in terms of, get, 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 get more support to enrich themselves alone, but not the ordinary youth, not the real potential migrants, those who will migrate. Uh, who will migrate. migrate. Yeah. I understand um, where you're coming from as well. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's something that needs to be worked on. Mm -hmm. um, and like I, I remember having Fatu Jan on my platform mm -hmm. and I told her this is something that should be discussed collectively mm -hmm. because it's an ongoing one. Yeah. Um, so we, we will get to that one day, inshallah. And I don't know how, even with this COVID at the moment, but we will find a way, inshallah. So mm -hmm. we have to now wrap it up. And this is my favorite question. Mm -hmm. As a young person, um, mm -hmm. it would be nice to know what you have to say for your fellow young people mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. Just something short and sweet and precise <laughs> that, you know, Whoever's listening can be like, wow, okay, Bai said this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to remember that and act on it. Ah, yeah, thank you very much. So, man, what I have for them is like, we are the, we have to believe in ourselves as a youth man. Mm -hmm. And everything that's happened, or that is happening, it is happening for a purpose, for a cause, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to learn through it, but it should not get you discouraged. Mm -hmm. Because in the Gambia, we don't believe that we can make it here. Mm -hmm. And for us, we believe. With all the experience we have outside the Gambia, we believe we can make it even more than them. But mm -hmm. it's up to us, you know, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, even I, that's, that's, that's a very, it's a very, it's a very challenging thing for the Gambia. Come the whole neka law have not, as a Gambian law, not palas vila neka de ligay, wala fila neka, wala fila deka, wala ki la don, wala ki. Come as a Gambian, leng wara neka, leng wara job collectively. Why then you buga nyinge dugal ay sentiments yo hamne lolo after da fata ndaw yi duñ muna gom duñ muna gom ne fi comme dara mo ngi fi comme so ñewé ci dekk bi ci ndaw yi nekkuñ di ñu nekkuñ di lañ dimbalé way ñom tamit buñ tok ha dimbal because kula jo kula dundal mom mo la wax yo foy taxaw ak loy def way ñun yeb mën nañu create something te gambian bu nekkut ku ndaw Gis nga buñ gene ñun ñu xolal Afrique Gambian fo nek rek bala nga so fa yaage yo di nga nek ci kanam all the other countries yeb dañ da nga da nga da nga ñu lead way fi ni dañ gom ne duñ mëna nek e leader te fi lañ wara gëna mëna leader because ñun bu ñoo ñoo andu dara dara comme ben dala ben kawas ben mbuwa ben everything wa alhamdulillah tay comme suñ la waxute ne ñun dañ ñoon baguye doko gom because lan la yeremuñ suñ bofa teewuñ suñ bofa ne comme dañ ñaaka te legal alhamdulillah within this 3 years sila taka jabar sila xolal tukki yeb ci experience bi la te amna ñu ne ñuma gëna dund experience gëna meti yi comme let them learn from those experience ñu jëma set naka lañu developer zone bofa bala ñu xaar government bi bala ñu xaar organization bi bala ñu xaar comme anywhere even though so ami opportunity bi tamit su ndimbal ñewute doko mëna def te right now ñu ngi ko gis ci suñu government bi ñu ngi ko gis ci suñu lefin yeb lu ñoo def moy lan xaar ndimbal so lool dafa wara je yeah okay thank you very much bye um nikon munga continue to continue to talk and talk and talk but we don't have the time now i like to do my signing out and and you know you've heard it from bye he said we need to believe in ourselves and know that we can make it in the gambia and believe in yourself first before you're trying to elevate and do something outside elsewhere you can be great outside but remember you need to be more great in the country that you're from so that you can show and teach the young people that 
already when you're here as a young one you can do it believe in yourselves and you'll make it and that's all i had for you in this episode of coffee with i'm now signing out um thank you to my cameramen and the technicians behind making this amazing and looking great and thank you to perfect glam for making my face look good i have to wear the mask of this covid 19 period and i hope everyone out there stay safe stay protected and you know stay at home if you're not going to work okay thank you